Hello, I'm Greg E.G. Idra Fields, and this is Razor Academy Replay Analysis. Today we'll be looking at a macro storm host style versus the Korean pro gamer uh, LGIM first. Here we have me, E.G. Idra, as the blue zerk in the bottom left, and LGIM first as the red protoss in the top right. I'm not entirely sure this is the actual first. I was most likely a Korean pro gamer, and there's a pretty good chance it's him as there's a lot of Korean pro gamers playing on the Harley Storm ladder right now using their real IDs. And this game, we're going to be taking a look at a Swarm Host based ZVP style. Um, Swarm Hosts are becoming quite popular in ZVP, however, a lot of players are still using them as more of a cheesy kind of thing. They're doing two base all ins, Queen plus Swarm Host rushes. It's just less reliable, less staple styles of play that I feel will be phased out as soon as Protosses get more comfortable with the timings. Um, this is uh, more of a macro style. I, I incorporate them in my mid game army, use them as a siege unit, use them to force fights, and also as very good DPS and tanking against non-AOE units. Against Stalker, Mortal Century, or whatnot, if they do one of those two and a half phase timings into Swarm Host, they're going to get absolutely destroyed. It's basically just a hard counter. And those kind of builds are getting more and more popular given the strength of the Mothership Core recall ability. So here we see that first is actually piloting in his main. We'll see that he's going to go gateway expansion. Uh, this is becoming much more popular again with the ability, uh, the Mothership Recall, Mothership Core Recall ability. Uh, warp gate timings after a uh, Nexus first, or pardon me, after a gateway expansion. Uh, very quick warp gate timings are now quite powerful because if your Zerg opponent actually does have enough units to hold off the attack, you can simply recall, uh, saving all those units and then doing a follow up timing, which is very likely to be successful given that Zerg has invested a lot of resources, um, both, res uh, both minerals, gas, and larva, in holding off that initial timing and then got nothing out of it. Um, so for that reason, gateway expansion is becoming much more popular. And the only thing Zerg really has to be careful about with this is they have to watch for the Nexus timing and they have to get very fast speedling. Uh, getting speedling is okay as obviously Protoss is not getting their Nexus as quickly, they don't have as much of an economy. However, they do have that aggressive potential in the very quick warp grade upgrade. Uh, so you compensate for that by getting your early speedling. As soon as I see that he has not walled in, he has not gone for Nexus first, I will put down that Gas Geyser. And then I'll expand, and the next thing from there on out is to watch for his Nexus to actually go down. His Nexus going down is what tells you it's okay to take that third base, uh, whichever third you choose to take. So here we see he has not taken that second gas just yet. Um, you will get the occasional actual one base all in, however it's not particularly common. 99% uh, of the time if Protoss goes gateway first, they will then go ahead and put down a Nexus out here. Upon seeing that pylon, we see that I did put down uh, the gas, as I said, but upon seeing that pylon, I know that he's probably not going to foregate. Uh, it's very unusual to put a pylon down here if you are going to. So I feel reasonably safe macroing up. Uh, you see you get the second queen from the main base, as always. Queens are quite a bit more important versus this style of play, as they add a little bit of extra defensive oomph against uh, warp gate rush. Um, but also very fast tech builds are quite common because we see it has a cyber core much earlier than a Nexus or Forge first build would um, would allow you to tech. So he could have a Stargate out very quickly. Um, also other means of tech. However, having those queens out very early helps a lot versus any kind of fast Void Ray or fast Stargate tech. So here we see I gather up just enough gas to get that speed thing upgrade. And then from there on out, I go into a pretty normal macro game, take that third base, uh, stop gas mining, and here we see taking drones off immediately. Uh, just getting your drone count up as much as possible until you think you actually get to a point where you're going to need to produce units to pull off any kind of timing. And of course you'll be scouting for his gateway count or any kind of tech uh, to know just when you're going to need to react. Here we see him poking with a stalker, that's very common. That's another big perk of the gateway first kind of play. And also another reason that you need to get a speedling upgrade out earlier than normal. Um, the stalker is essentially untouchable off of creep as it is the exact same speed as slow circling so it can always get away safely as long as it does not get surrounded. So with decent stalker control, any Protoss can um, just get pretty good map control, force some circlings out of you, maybe get a drone kill if you're sloppy, uh, so poke at your queen and slow the queen down for any potential air harass. Uh, so just a nice little, a nice little opening tactic that a lot of Protosses use now. So here we see the third hatchery has come down. ZVP is, uh, for me at least, not very changed early on. I still feel that any kind of two base build is going to be very cheesy. Yuta's very much so hard countered by Phoenix uh, in low econ kind of games. So any kind of two base Muta is just purely hoping that your opponent does not know about it and does not go Stargate. Two base Hydra. Hydras are still pretty weak. Um, 
The addition of mobility improves their, their function as a glass cannon. However, uh, they are still a glass cannon, so in any situation where you're not going to be able to also uh, build tanking units such as Roches or at least Zerglings to absorb the first rounds of fire, the Hydras are going to be quite weak, so 2 base Hydra, not, not a great option. So for me, I'm definitely still sticking with 3 base. And here you see I was forced to get that early speed upgrade just to be safe uh, against Warp Gate. I see that he's not going to do any kind of rush, so I do want those Zerglings uh, to be put to some use. So I run in, he misses his force fields, or does not miss, but uh, casts them quite late. So I guess soccer kill, and I will come back in here and clean up this sentry. I also forced him to be more paranoid. It drew out a cannon, uh, a force field, got a couple of probe kills, and just kind of scared him. Made him think I might be playing more aggressively. So that was not the best trade, however those Zerglings weren't going to be doing uh, much else at this point in the game, so it was a worthwhile trade for me. And back at home we see that I have put up my gases, uh, produced a bunch of drones. If we look at the work account, I am now ahead in work account and producing way more than him. So uh, this is the point in the, fa or the phase of the game where Zerg pulls ahead of Protoss economically. Um, and my only responsibility at this point is to figure out just how many workers I can get away with before uh, he actually becomes dangerous. And seeing this pretty fast robo, I know that I can continue to produce drones for quite a bit longer, as it's going to take him a while to get any kind of immortal uh, force built up off that robo or anything like that. Plus, the robo is a very expensive building, uh, so I know he's not likely to be doing a gateway timing uh, after investing that much in that tech path. So we'll see that I do just continue to produce drones, otherwise a normal build, getting the lair right away, uh, getting range attack quite quickly. Um, I used to bounce back and forth between range attack and carapace, as sometimes you will want to go to a mutaling bailing style. However, more and more I'm feeling that mutas are not the way to go, just because so many people are playing air heavy compositions, and phoenix are quite good against mutalists, of course. So more often than not, I am opening up with that plus one range attack. It's much better at holding off two base all-ins, as it uh, increases the DPS coming out of your roaches. Um, and then also, of course, it applies to Locust, Swarm Hosts, uh, and Hydralists later on in the game. And we see I am up to four gas, or pardon me, four gas. I'm getting my speed upgrade, and I'm producing pure units now that I've seen his attack moving out. I'm going to be very well prepared to hold this off. Unfortunately for me, uh, he does have a backup plan. He has this Warp Prism coming out. That was the sole purpose of that robo. So he's going to do some multi-pronged harass while putting up this third base here. Um, you can tell this is the real difference between foreign and Korean players. Uh, foreign players much more likely to sit back and kind of do their thing. Korean players always very in your face, forcing you to make mistakes and just kind of keeping the pressure on you and not letting you do your own thing. Here we see I have more than enough units to hold off this main attack. However, with that mothership core there, he's totally safe in poking in here. Uh, if he gets caught, he can just recall out of there. Be totally fine. And at the same time, warping in my main. As we see, I have zero defense there. A uh, little bit of a scouting blunder by me. I should have been more prepared for that. Unfortunately, I wasn't. Immediately pull units back to deal with it. However, I have to be careful and split up my units to make sure I don't die to this attack. And in that time, he's actually targeting down drones. So should have run those. So I'm not really dealing with this part of the attack particularly well. However, I will be able to hold this off very easily. And if we look at the worker count, I am actually I'm actually behind him. That's quite surprising. Um, but I do have three full bases running, and his third base is quite late. Plus his tech. Uh, kind of slow, just now starting up on his immortal count. However, with the use of the force fields and the mothership core, this army is going to survive pretty much unscathed. But I now have secured all three of my bases, and I'm up to a position where I can start my swarm host production. We see the locust upgrade beginning now. I'm going to run up here and clear this area out, make sure there's no remaining pylons that could lead to later warp ins, um, zealot warp ins, and harass and whatnot. And that leads kind of into the mid game. It's very important to shut down any harass potential your uh, opponent has, as the problem with swarm hosts is that they are very positional and slow. They have to be set up beforehand in order to do the most possible damage and to be safe. They're not good at defending harass or uh, defending extremely mobile armies. And that is one problem with using swarm hosts on this map or any map like Daybreak or whatnot with multiple pathways around the center and particularly spread out expansions. Um, as we will see later on in this game, as I'm engaging up towards his third base with Swarm Host, he's just going to run around and abuse their lack of mobility. Uh, so you have to be very, very conscientious about having your static defense set up when you are going to play a Swarm Host base style. As a smart Protoss, if they don't have the army to actually engage your Locust head on right from the start, they are likely to run around or at least go for War Prism Harass or Pylon Warp and Harass. So always be very conscientious of that. You see, my Swarm Host production has begun. He also has a robo bay, robo bay coming. I did not show up, but this overseer ran through his base and saw that robo bay. So I will be putting up a spire shortly. Um, I'm kind of torn on the Corruptor vs. Viper response to Colossus. 
Uh, as you do have the infestation pit up for the in, uh, for the swarm host, you can go to hive immediately, and vipers require no additional tech. So that is a possible response, one that I've seen a lot of other zergs do. However, corruptors have the added benefit of being able to shoot down um, observers, and obviously they are they are the intended counter to colossus. They're quite efficient at killing them. Um, but neither path seems uh, foolproof. foolproof. Uh, both definitely can lose. And in general, I'm just finding macro CVP is quite hard right now, so I'm not sure what the best option is. But in this case, I will be going Spire and I will be heading up towards Corruptor. My end game composition goal is actually Corruptor Hydra Swarm Hosts. The Hydras help uh, cover against Void Rays. The Swarm Hosts obviously provide a lot of DPS and additional ground uh, presence against the Stalker Immortal portion of his army. And the Corruptors are there to shoot down the Observers and to engage his Colossus. And so here we see I am pushing in with these swarm hosts. My support units are there just in case he does try to blink in or try to engage against my swarm host army. However, he realizes that he does not have the right uh, composition or the uh, right amount of force to actually engage us. So he is going to try and run around, as I said, and go for a counterattack or to catch my swarm host from a bad angle. But luckily for me, my locusts pop right at that moment and I, my su support units return from actually killing that third nexus. So I'm able to force him back without any losses in the Swarm House count. So his third base is now down. That was perfect timing for me to hit. It was right before his Colossus started, to or before his Colossus production started. However, if we look back at the base, he has started uh, warp and harass at the same time. As I said, Swarm House Army is not particularly good against uh, harass-based play, as they are just so immobile. And they just require them, you, they have to be set up beforehand in order to be used. You, you obviously have to wait for the next reduction round of locusts to come out, otherwise they're just sitting ducks. So you have to really think when you're using Swarm Hosts and make sure they are set up um, to be used efficiently. So here, good force field is actually trapping some of those Swarm Hosts, taking a lot of losses here. However, he just now resetting his third base. I have been on third base for quite some time. So with that economic advantage, I can afford a few losses. I'm now starting up my Corruptor production. I'm also adding more Swarm Hosts, making sure I keep that count up. Um, uh, Heart of the Storm is still a relatively new game. I'm not set on what the perfect number of Swarm Hosts is. However, I feel it's between 10 and 16. Uh, that seems to be about right. And obviously, it depends on your opponent's unit composition. If they're not making any Colossus, now, uh, then you can obviously afford to sink quite a bit more supply into those Swarm Hosts. Uh, however, if they are making Colossus, then you need Corruptors as well. And you always need some support units, um, as you don't want to be caught with just Locusts, as that will leave vulnerabilities. So here his third nexus is finally coming up, however back at home I have been establishing this fourth base, I'm now essentially maxed, I'm getting my upgrades up and running, plus two range attack already finished, plus one carapace uh, also finished, and starting my air upgrades on those corruptors. Those corruptors are going to become very important as this game goes on, as they are your anti-colossus, it's very important to be able to shut down those colossus. And then also as we see the void ray, or pardon me, the stargate coming up, Protoss endgames, uh, almost without fail, include Void Rays now as they are just so powerful against pretty much everything in the Zerg arsenal. Uh, so the combination of upgraded Corruptors and Hydras, that is going to be your response to those Void Rays. So very important to get those upgrades going on uh, the air units as well. So here, sending the Locusts in to harass. Again, the positioning is absolutely everything here. You have to have the Swarm Hosts in. Here they are pretty exposed. I don't have very many support units to cover them. I have to depend on using my Corruptors to actually shoot down. Uh, the observer, or actually, he does not have an observer with him. Uh, his observer's back here. He realizes that he doesn't want to try and engage into those locusts, so he runs in. As soon as this locust wave comes in, I'm going to unburrow these uh, swarm hosts, move them in closer. Uh, and that is the proper way to use swarm hosts. Always wait for the round of locusts to come out, then unburrow the swarm hosts and move them in after, or retreat them, uh, whichever the case may be. But just always use the round of locusts uh, to cover your swarm host movement. So here he does get the uh, does get the hatchery and runs away. My Zerklings trap a couple of units. However, he gets away pretty cleanly. Didn't lose too much there. But the thing is, he was forced down this path, and that is the danger with using uh, with uh, being a very mobile army. Sometimes you are caught out of position like this. Uh, I use my swarm host to force him down that path, then run my support units in here to take down that exposed the base, knowing that he would have to run all the way around up here. He could not afford to go back in through the swarm hosts. Then, as soon as another round of locusts is ready, I burrow the swarm hosts and send the locusts on in uh, to begin engaging again. My corruptor is sitting here waiting to engage against the colossus should they venture forward. 
And right now, since he has taken out my fourth base, I do need to do quite a bit of damage to this third. It's going to be very hard for me to fight on an even economy for Protoss. The Swarm Puffs are quite uh, cost efficient in a lot of scenarios. However, you never want to be on an even base with Protoss. You almost have to, almost always have to out economy them and uh, throw, throw waves of units at them. And so here we see that I am getting that Hydrogen. More often than not, you will have it earlier than this. However, because of the way he was playing, because he was playing very Warp Gate Harass uh, focused, I was making more Roachling early on just to be defensive and hold on to that. So I am now just getting my Hydrogen in time to defend his Air Switch. Um, you do really need Hydras against Void Rays. Corruptors as armored units just take way too much damage from the Void Ray Charge ability. And you can't fight without the Hydras um, and expect to kill them. And so here he's getting a little bit over eager, pushing into the Locust, so I take the opportunity to go in, shoot down his Observer, also taking down one of the Velocis. Don't want to overcommit there, you have to keep those units alive. We see, if we look at the economies, uh, I have a pretty big advantage in terms of bank and supply, and there he actually messed up, he blinked a little bit too aggressively right as the round of Locusts come in, so I am able to charge forward, take out all of the Colossus, and then do a lot of damage to his remaining ground army. And here we see, as soon as I knew he made a mistake and he gave up ground, he was going to have to fall back and fight against my army. I moved my uh, swarm hosts forward. The closer your swarm hosts are to the target, the more vulnerable they are. However, the faster the locusts get into the battle, and thus the longer they will last. Um, obviously, because they don't have to spend as much of their lifetime trans uh, traveling up towards the target. So here he was able to hold on to that expansion with those Void Rays. I wasn't quite ready for them yet. We see now 14 Hydras in production as a response. However, I did take out all of his Colossus and all of his tech units, left with just a handful of Stalkers. So as soon as I resupply on that Hydraling army, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. He really just doesn't have the AoE DPS uh, to take out light units like Hydras and Zerglings. So here, moving in once again, uh, going for the kill on that third base, also having established my fourth and taking a fifth. So this game really going uh, quite solidly in my favor. Those were good engagements back there um, when I was able to pick my timing to go in with the Corruptors to take out the Colossus as efficiently as possible. And here I am using my Locust to force his army back while at the same time I'm going to run in with my support units and actually try and take down the Nexus. Hold positioning the Zerglings in the worker line to get some probe kills. Uh, he is able to engage with his army there so I pull back and wait for the next round of Locusts in order to then go in safely and force his army back. And here he's in a full-on retreat. His fourth base is kind of up, however, a bunch of roaches harassing it. This map, very, very well designed for a multi-pronged harass. Uh, you have to be very careful not to let your opponent establish expansions, because it's very difficult to hold on to expansions here. This means it's going to be hard for you to expand, so you have to make it hard for them to expand. And so, in using my roaches to draw his army back here, I was able to get my swarm hosts up into his choke, where they're going to be able to apply pressure to his natural. And at the same time, I'm going to break down these rocks and try and come in here and attack that base. And at this point, I'm really just pushing in for the kill. If we look at the supply differential, if we look at the base differential and uh, compare our banks, there's really not too much he can do, uh, especially given that he's not on the super error army that Protossus really want to aim for. And that is one of the things that I like most about the Swarm Host composition. It makes it very hard for Protoss to be incredibly defensive because those round of locusts are going to be constantly hitting them and constantly doing damage. This makes it very dangerous for them to try and just sit and go up to the air army that every Protoss is aiming for now. If you want to play very passively and head towards uh, Void Ray and Templar and whatnot, you will get run over by Swarm Host uh, Hydra Lane. So it forces Protoss to invest more in this mid-game army that's not nearly as efficient as the dreaded Sky Toss. So here, pushing in the front, and at the same time, my support unit is coming in here to take down his last remaining Nexus. He does move in here and actually engages the Swarm Host bodies. Uh, the Locusts do pop forward, and I use the Locusts again to cover my retreat, just pulling back as soon as they come up. However, he blinks forward to try and take them off, but he has no more economy left, and so he is forced to GG. So that was my take on Swarm Host CVP. This has been the Razor Academy Replay Analysis. Thank you for watching. Hello, I'm Greg from Fields, and this is a Razor Academy Replay Analysis. Today we'll be looking at a Muling Baneling vs. Bio composition in a ZBT game on Antigua Shipyard vs. a Korean Terran. 
Here we have me, Ichi Idra is the red Zerg in the bottom left, and a Korean Terran, I'm not sure what his AK is, um, probably a Smurf, but Korean ID. Uh, blue Terran in the top right. And I actually am demonstrating this replay just because it's one of the few wins I have versus Terran. I'm just 